In this video, let's talk about all of the new AI features inside DaVinci Resolve. Real quick, you're watching VP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors for helping make our NEB coverage possible, Blackmagic and Atomos. And now back to the video. All right, I'm here with Bob from Blackmagic. Bob, good to see you again. Hey. Uh, so let's talk about Resolve. Bunch of new features added. Uh, let's start off, can you go and give me the highlights of the features and we'll dive into a couple that are interesting. Yeah, sure. So Resolve 19 out in beta now. Uh, we put in over a hundred new things, but uh, one of the things is IntelliTrack AI that we're using. So our neural engine, which is where we do all our AI processing, we have this new one that's used in a couple different forms, right? So there's, there's use of it in the uh, Fusion page, the color page, but also it's used in uh, Fairlight. So we're able to actually track sound. So like as a plane goes across the screen, by tracking the sound, it'll automatically do the panning to match the sound as it would travel across the scene, right? So it basically a lot of things to accelerate the process, but still give you all the freedom of, of, of doing the, the uh, audio adjustments but saving a lot of keyframing time, which I think is what a lot of people most enjoy. <laughs> For sure. And uh, it's got a lot of new AI features, but it's very interesting because it's sort of not AI when we think of generative AI. It's very like practical Correct. Uh, stuff in the editor. So what are some of the, what we're looking at tracking here, but what are some of the other AI features like we this, got? This is the multi-point tracking, right? Which is really difficult to do if you had to set up a different layer to, to track everything, where this way you can go in, specifically say what you want to track, and then it does all the math for you, right? And that's the kind of AI that we're using, not ones that generative AI, more so, but it's assistant AI. And it's just ways to create, you know, you can do this without the AI, but it would take so much longer because you're doing manual fee framing. And this is, it's a way to speed up the process. Because at the end of the day, you're not really saving time so much. You're able to just spend your time doing better things than just something, you know, like rotoscoping and whatnot. Like there's a great one that we use where uh, we can, Focus the background easily, right? By creating the mat of the foreground, and then you can, you know, add depth of field and things like that. Again, you could do that before. It just wasn't a, a keystroke. It was, you know, and uh, and and some sliders. It was a lot more painstaking. You have to cut the mat yourself and things like that. So really, it's like you know what you want to do. It just this helps you get to that point and then finesse it and spend more time finessing than you do creating the mat. And yeah, uh, the, there's denoising, or uh, the music remixing, it's splitting the tracks out. Right, that so one's really cool, where you can actually, you know, you can split out the whole track, like if, if there's something combined, you can you can isolate the music from the dialogue, you know, and we we had one last year that, that helped uh, do dialogue, so you can take out all the noise in the background and isolate the person speaking. We uh, did the, um, the talk to text, so like, you know, you can do subtitles for you, and now we can do it where you, you can isolate words and it'll, it'll follow around for you. It's, there's a lot of, like, cool things to help. It's really, it's doing what people wanted to do, but do they have the time to do it? And now there is the time to do it, especially like documentaries and things that will really help the process of doing, uh, doing that kind of work for you. Do you feel like it's sort of enabling like one person to do what might have taken a team of 10 to do or just or more specialists to do? Well, yeah, I think what will happen is that you then you can spend the time having the right people do the right part of it, right? So the editor can edit and then the color grader. And now with our Blackmagic cloud service where you can share project files and, uh, and uh, footage, you know, anywhere with anyone, anywhere, mm -hmm. that really is great because then you can, people can use specific people for the desk. So like, you know, oh, that's a guy I really want to work with on the color or the audio or whatever. So these kind of things have really broadened the way that people work rather than just whoever's in their neighborhood or whatever. Yeah, you know, uh, I really have a question about Black Magic Cloud. Uh, do you have any plans to open it up to connect to other cloud services, Frame.io, Sony C? Uh, you know, I don't know. It depends on, you know, like we are at the, we're still kind of early days in it. So we want to like lock it down to do what we do. But, you know, you never know what we do. I mean, we, we announced the Black Magic camera app in September, mm -hmm. right? And that's on, on the, the Mac, uh, iOS, right? But we are actually showing the Android version now. So you never know. All right, I could think though. And yeah, one other thing about the uh, the spatial remixing, um, or the using the three D perspective, is some of the idea behind that of like sort of making content for other formats like Apple Vision Pro and sort of this possible merging of like different types of formats. Right. Doing. You know, more there's some more immersive um, environments, right? And so we need to uh, be able to work with that, right? Also, I mean, even just doing the new virtual production workflow that people are doing, you know, and having uh, you know, high resolution screens and whatever, and dealing with 
uh, the foreground and the backgrounds and, and having to be able to mesh them better and things. So you do need that sort of 3D space to be able to, to uh, and have handles on it to be able to do that kind of work. And so, yeah, and I'm sure the, you know, Apple Vision Pro and things like that, you know, content for that. So you have better uh, ways to do it. I mean, you know, we've done 3D for a long time. And so it, there's a lot of those kind of tools that you can use and mirror in that, in that, in those situations. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I feel like also, I don't want to skip out on one of the bigger announcements of uh, text-based editing. Can you tell me about that? But well, perfect. right. So that's a, a, you know, a highlight word. And, yeah. You can, yeah, I mean, it started last year with our audio to text uh, tool, right? So we could derive the text from the audio. And now it's editing on the words and being able to go to specific words, hit where it is, and then and create edits for there. You know, it, it's just the next evolution of the original uh, audio to text, is, you know, so it's just like the next step. And, uh, you know, of course, last year, when you, no matter what you introduce, somebody goes, yeah, but what about this? And, <laughs> you know, and that's part of the reason we come and we bring the big team that we bring here because they want to show off what they've done. But then they also want to get ideas for what's next because, you know, here we are on Resolve 19 and, you know. You know, we're always going to update and do other things. It'll be Resolve 20. Yeah, so, you know, eventually there'll be something. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 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 Uh, well, great. Thanks a lot, Bob. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks. And that is it for this video. Be sure to check out the rest of our NAB coverage over here at this playlist and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next episode.